Hello, everybody, and welcome to Unearthly Twilights. My name is Grant Ellis, and uh, this is episode six of Invisible Sun. Uh, we are coming live to you uh, here on WebDM's Twitch channel, um, and I'm excited for tonight's session as we return back into the actuality. For those of you that are unaware, Invisible Sun is a surreal fantasy game that takes place... Um, in what uh, Monty Cook perceives as the real world, that of the actuality, uh, there is a path of eight suns, and the ninth sun, which represents magic, shines its light upon all. Um, we left uh, our players in a bit of a ballroom brawl, and as the evening came to a close, uh, they went their separate ways with a little more information than they left off. Uh, I mean, it was best also part an opportunity is the, uh, for, you know, she's got never. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mute you during my introduction, so you can't interrupt like that. So <laughs> I'm evil. <laughs> um, but let's go around and introduce our cast and crew. Let's go ahead and start with uh, playing Armida, the Goetic. Uh, Kelly, the Opera Geek. Hello, Kelly. You are looking amazing tonight. <laughs> Why, thank you, Grant. Your hair is beautiful as well. No. <laughs> um, so, hi, I'm Kelly. I'm the Opera Geek. Uh, I play Armida, the saddest cat-owning weirdo you'll meet in the actuality. <laughs> She's a little weird, uh, but it's okay. She's, she loves hanging out with all of her new friends, even if they like to eat weird things and throw their teeth at people. Babylon. And, um, speaking of Babylon, hi, TK. How are you? Welcome back. Me! I'm back, um, playing Babylon, who just got back from the shadow and whatever nonsense was being done to her over there. She's a little bummed that she missed a party, but it probably wasn't a very good party anyway, because she wasn't there, so that's fine. Whatever. She's not mad. I'm a little mad. You were you were sincerely missed, um, but it's great to have Babylon back in the party to help the narrative move forward. Um, speaking of moving the narrative forward, Mr. Jordan Shively joins us once again as Noah Besden. How are you, Jordan? Doing pretty good. Ready to get back to some devouring. Playing <laughs> Noah Besden, uh, aromatic, um loner character who is maybe not going to be quite as alone as he thought he was. Yeah, he's uh, he's starting to introduce some feels, uh, corsages coming and going, uh, sticking up uh, for what's right in the middle of a party. And uh, even uh, disgusted by it all. <laughs> even making a frenemy in uh, Wise Charles Abernathy. Um, the... Uh, Goetic former instructor of Armida herself. Um, let's toss it over to uh, Jim Davis, one half of the WebDM crew. Jim, how are you? Hey, hey, doing all right. Uh, looking forward to diving back in to uh, pseudonym Python and, and her sort of, uh, I don't know what you would call it. There's something, she's, there's, a, there's something about her that she has not yet discovered about herself. And so we're trying to piece that in so I'm, I, I don't know my my thoughts are all over the place this evening folks uh as they usually are the unregulated intersection that is my mind so <laughs> good to be here happy to play with all these uh great people and um yeah looking to uh get down with some surreal fantasy I'd like to welcome uh, Ethan Robot Bear and Devin Rudichat. Ethan uh, interviewed me this week about Invisible Sun. You can catch his podcast on Podomatic, where we talk about this show and several others. Uh, and Devin Roo, uh, a former castmate of mine who is the apple of my eye. Uh, her eyebrows don't lie um, when she plays the game. Super fun role player uh, to play with, and also the mistress of maps. And last but not least... Uh, a real man's man, a gent who I had the opportunity to throw some darts with and uh, uh, eat lots of good food with. I think we devoured uh, plenty of turkey legs and uh, pork chops on a stick. Jonathan Pruitt. And it's not a euphemism. 
don't forget the snicker prudles either the snicker prudles my goodness <laughs> and the next day like it's like oh yeah i had one then the next day when we met like i ate all of them if you didn't notice i was just like <laughs> keep these snicker prudles <laughs> so uh come see me at pax unplugged and uh i'll probably be able to hook you up there uh as the legend grows and one day i will take over the cookie world uh, but yes, I am Pruitt. Uh, I'm glad to be back uh, in the aftermath of this uh, this thing that they called a party. And uh, uh, I'll be playing Galahad, uh, everyone's favorite maker who warps space and time. Uh, except he's uh, running out of space and possibly running out of time. So I'm just going to try to keep my head on straight tonight uh, as much as I can. Well, we're excited to have you back. Uh, do we have a volunteer from the party who would like to give a brief recap of what the party experienced last week and uh, the direction they'd like to go and the scene they'd like to set? Now, just before we do that, uh, I will point our audience's attention to the Soothe deck, which is a tarot-like deck of cards that impact play. Uh, magic is in constant flux and change. And currently, the uh, card that is ascending is the Untrustworthy Mirror card. Uh, for those of you interested in Invisible Sun lore, mirrors are a virus that are slowly taking over the actuality. Um, and gold magic is ascending, uh, and silver magic is waning. So, uh, rebirth cards and magic is uh, essentially renewal of the soul is the ascending magical force. Uh so for a recap, come on, there we go. I'm playing with all kinds of controls and knobs over here. <laughs> um, I have like a crank that I turn. There, we're back. So what occurred last session of interest to the party? That's probably the best way to do it. Rather than like a full-on synopsis, let's talk about some things that were interesting to each of your characters specifically. Whether you learn something new or you change, you don't have to give a full character summary. Uh, so we'll exempt TK from this as uh, Babylon was back in shadow. Um, watching lots of good television, I'm sure. Because um, that exists Doesn't have TV in the actuality? They do, but it's know. often very, very strange. Like, they talk about it in the source book. They go, if you find a television set, be very careful when you turn it on. <laughs> well, then, I don't, I, I, then I'm, I'm lost and, and scared in this brave new world. <laughs> Pseudo uh, was, uh, enjoyed her party. You know, as, as I think I maybe uh, mentioned, like she'd spent a lot of time since she came back from Shadow, spending, spending time by herself in her house and, and at the Order of the Vance. And so getting out and socializing is something she's wanted to do for a while and, and felt a need for it. It was good to get out and have a, a lighthearted party with a little bit of uh, a little bit of flesh wounds. No big deal. Perfectly healed up afterwards. And besides Paris needed to, uh, to be shown that you can't come in to someone's house while they're having a party, waving a knife around and expect to, to just get your way. You know, somebody's got to stand up to him. Um, so that's sort of what uh, Sudo took away from it. A nice, low-key uh, social gathering where uh, she made some new friends. What about Galahad? Uh, Galahad, he learned uh, a few things about uh, this, this, this chamber man and the one looking to thwart his plans, uh, this, this Leo. Um... Apparently, Leo's bankrupting himself. I don't know. Uh, trying to combat this chamberman who's buying up things and making them disappear. Galahad's just wondering uh, uh, if that has anything to do with his situation. And, uh, and then he flirted a little bit with uh, the party's uh, host. So that was important to him as well. He still got it. After everything else that he loses, at least he has that. What about... I'm curious about Noah and then Armida. Um, I feel like Noah is reluctantly taking steps away from only thinking about like his ultimate goal and seeing everyone as just different gears in a machine that he's building that to get him to his goal, he's starting to see that um, it is, well, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing to care about something other than the goal of devouring God's secret name. So, um, he had a few moments there. Like he, pro I think, at this moment, at the end of last episode, he's regretting ninety percent of what he did. 
and um kind of like that feeling of like oh shit like i opened up because he is um stoic so like he's regretting that moment of ardent that he had there at the party and what probably has retreated quite a bit into backpedaling from it as of the beginning of this episode as far as you know like when you like I'm a little too honest at a party, and then the next day you kind of like ghost everything a little emotional. I think that's where he is. And Armida. Yes. Um, how did you change <laughs> during the <this> session? <laughs> um, so Armida was really excited to go to the party. Um, because, you know, she really, since she doesn't have any memories, she doesn't remember going to a party before. And she was really excited to go out with her friends. She even made Noah a corsage because she labored under the idea that Noah had actually agreed to go to the party with her. Um, but uh, when she got to the party, um, for anybody that wasn't here last week, she really likes cupcakes. And apparently the cupcakes at this party are mildly hallucinogenic, which caused a little bit of a problem and uh she got a bit um i don't really what's the word for it not depressed she got like uh low to the ground literally oh literally <laughs> yeah um go up <laughs> in resulting in like during the scrap with the person that stabbed pseudonym um she actually released one of her her offensive spells but then like had to be t basically pulled off and told to stop it she found out that um her family who she doesn't remember but she assumed would be desperately looking for her are in fact still in shadow and still perfectly fine or not in shadow in actuality and haven't bothered to look for her uh so that that upset her further as well as finding someone who had apparently bought one of her memories out of a 25 cent gumball machine, which was very upsetting. So she didn't really have the best of times at her first party. <laughs> Wasn't, and I think we ended with Archie floating on the ceiling again. I don't know how he keeps floating, but I think Archie I, was floating. I think the octopus floating the octopus, octopus thing was, was yeah, it's carrying yeah. him around. Octopus was floating around with Archie, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, uh, the floating octopus. Of course, that's how it happened. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where could it have been? <laughs> Wouldn't it be a visible sun without a floating octopus? Exactly. So, yes, yeah, so she did retrieve one of her memories, which she did share with Noah, since he was able to fight back his urge to just consume her memories and give it to her. She did share part of her memory with him. Yeah, that was definitely a moment for Noah, too, because the secret memory that since Armida had forgotten it and no one had used it yet, that's a pretty good, pristine secret. So he almost had like a fiend moment where he really, really wanted to mainline it, but then he didn't. <laughs> he I think he did like wipe a little bit on his gums though afterwards. He did actually. It was a little creepy. It, it was just a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question. Uh, so play has begun and... Uh, now you may decide as your characters where you would like uh, to begin today, where you would like to set your scene uh, after the party. Uh, some time has passed. Um, how long till after the party do you all get together to reconvene? Um, and when you do, where do you meet? And it may be that when you meet, you have specific goals. It might be to learn... Uh, more information about someone or something that was revealed to you at the party. Um, and we can talk about where one of those places may be. Um, but talk amongst yourselves and decide. And then we'll set the scene. Well, Galahad usually defaults to uh, Babylon's place. So since Babylon was not at the party, he might want to go he's gonna first thing in the morning go check on uh, check on her. And that's where he would uh, he would start. Uh, what yeah, about I'd, Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah I'd say uh, let's say five actuality days Babylon does not return to her her Babsy dream house. 
Uh, yeah, by that time, I'm probably, like, the neighbor. I'm probably up on the ceiling with him, like, grilling him. Where is she? What'd you do with her? <laughs> like... Are you using a Batman voice? Because that's what it sounded. Yeah, like. it kind of it kind of changes a little bit. I mean, he's he's just putting on yeah. for the guy, but he's, he's <laughs> like, do you know what I did in the war? You know the things that I've seen. Oh wow! <laughs> Which NPC do you have your hands on? The weird neighbor. The weird neighbor. The one that sleeps on Babylon's ceiling. Oh no, the yeah. other guy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's always in her house, and it, 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 she hadn't been in there in five days. Yeah, so. the one that keeps trying to live in her fridge. Oh, he he totally. Um, he totally is terrified of you, and uh, he's telling you, I haven't seen her, but I make sure that... Uh, Rodney. His Rodney. Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very much just, you know, and he's he answers you matter-of-factly the whole time, uh, just kind of... Uh, you can tell she hasn't been here because her bed's still made, and Babylon never makes your bed unless she's gone back to Shadow. And uh, he's, you know, really kind of uh, taken aback by your forcefulness. Are you watering her plants? <laughs> I'm trying my best, but sometimes I forget. And he starts, like, crying. Little fish. They swim down the side yeah. of his face. Cry. Cry. <clears throat> you realize that you're supposed to water them three times a day. Bottom of the hour. Three times a day. And I'm going to cast uh, Chronomania on him uh, to uh, water her plants ever again. He's he's in. And, uh, yeah, he kind of uh, straightens out his tweed jacket and uh, just kind of sneaks. Uh, he, he takes, like, a half-eaten sandwich out of the fridge. It's probably been there for a long time. Um, and uh, he, he takes the watering bucket, and his little eyes look like little clocks' hands spinning around. He's like, never again will I forget. Oh, no. mm, that's much better. So, yeah, five days later, though, uh, Babylon does return. Um, and I, I assume that uh, Galahad is the first to find her uh, and brings her up to speed about the current events. Um, and then... Um, What's your plan of action? What's your your current goal that you want to accomplish as a party? And then we can use that to kind of steer where you go next. I think Noah was, had two things that he was very interested that they found out at the party. He was very interested in going after the Numa cult member who is living in Fartown because that is directly like the source where they will find out more about the Limerick Street. And then Very his other good. thing yeah. that he really wrote down that he wanted to follow up was to get the fucker who stole the memories now they know where he works. How about the rest of it? Also established that he wasn't the only one, I guess, that stole my memories because they're being sold in like machines all over. Yeah. yeah. Coin up, little drop a quarter in, or a you the, know, the, glass the Zodega orb and... probably has some of them. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, there was some pretty like horrifying um, suppositions that come out of this. The information from the party that I think we're about to find, like this, goes a lot deeper than just a few missing memories. So, I I would like to see a, a scene between Galahad and Babylon. This is just me, where Galahad convinces. Babylon to meet the rest of the Vizlay someplace. Um, what type of location would you meet to plan, start? Because uh, you know Variagin's the name of the member of the Numa who uh, lives in Fartown. You're not too sure where his house is. You might be able to ask some other people because surely if he lives here, someone knows who he is. Um, what type of establishment would you like to... Well, everybody's got to eat, so maybe someplace near where he lives. Someplace we haven't been yet. I mean, I like yep. I like the Godega, but I don't feel like climbing, you know, 30 stories today to just have a taco. <laughs> it's a challenge. Yeah. Um, how about Zeros? You have not been to Zeros yet. <gasps> yeah. um, maybe we go to Zeros. We can, we can convene. We can ask around about this person. Maybe find out little little tidbits what do you think um babylon is a little hungover 
And she's and while she's having this conversation with Galahad, she actually slaps Rodney's hand from where he's watering her plants. She's like, "Honey, those are plastic. Leave those alone." <laughs> and he's like, "Never again shall I forget." <laughs> and he sneaks Just off. Just go, go cry somewhere else, sweetie. He walks up the wall into the ceiling. All and right, kind we all of have like, problems. Yeah, he pulls himself into a little hole, and like the little <gasps> top dome of his head still sticking out. She just like quietly, please. Yeah, I don't. I don't. It's weird, right? He's he's just a strange person. Okay, mm-hmm. so we're gonna go find this this. You said cultist. Did you say a cultist? Is he a cultist? Ugh. I uh, yeah, maybe. Ew. He's okay. a member of an organization he- of Vizlay known as the Numa. That's what but she you can heard see why Noah cultist. would call him a cultist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, you know, they all think the same thing. He hangs around the same people. I mean, I don't like throwing labels like that around. But. Nerd. Um, okay, and this is supposed to help Sad Girl with the rat? Uh, oh, Armita. Yes, Armita. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, sure, yeah, we could do that. Sure, that's fine. I mean, whatever gets me and my money faster. Right. Mm. And way, so, you, are you you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm feeling great. And she like blinks really slowly, even though he can't see her <laughs> blink because she doesn't have eyes. It's just like a mishmash of like weird. Uh, I I want to say sort of an amorphous like reshifting of her face, um, because her mouth will move like without her body around her head so if she's talking to him and he's behind her her mouth will move to the back but like her face is just shifting constantly right now because she's like kind of got like some emotional and mental stuff going on Mm -hmm. it's like it can't decide what um what expression it wants to be so it defaults to like a pained smile like a pained grimace Right. Well, then perhaps we should go to Zero's. Yeah, I could eat. Just fine. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I could eat. And if they have coffee, like a lot of coffee, like... All of it? Like six six or seven vats of coffee, like a coffee field of coffee, that'd be great. And with that... um, Now, Zero's is only open or only you can only discover it at night so this is a uh bar restaurant that really is a demon that has taken the form of a bar uh very popular for Vizlay. they serve all the best drinks there um it pops up all over satarine which is the city in which uh far town is associated with um Far Town being in its own little pocket dimension. But I'm curious, which of the characters knows uh, where... knows how to find Zeros tonight? And it's going to be... It's it's going to be near... Uh, it's going to be near most likely where Varigan's house is. Or at least you'll find where it's located. Pseudo's never been. So. Oh... Around. First time. Perhaps it's beginner's luck then. I just don't see why you can't go to the Godega because it's just a quick climb. They got the best tacos. <laughs> I don't. Why did. Why, it's, anyway, it's fine. Um, where is it again? <laughs> Zeros? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to pop up someplace. <laughs> so here's how we're going to decide it. Right. I want all of you to roll a 10 sided die. And read with zero being the lowest, nine being the highest. Uh, oh, whoever okay. gets the highest is going to be the one to find it. Oh, jeez, jeez, jeez. Uh, no. Armida wasn't going to go to zeros, but um... or you don't have to. You can sit the scene Noah's out if you'd going. like. going. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's. I was going to be there. I feel like Noah. Like found it, but he didn't like tell anybody else. He just went by himself. He was yeah. <laughs> so, like he's like already there in the corner by himself. Like I will oh, roll man. just in case I get Reading that. A book. I did it's like not. okay. Literally the second saddest. 
did I forget to text everybody? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he just didn't want. He wanted to be by himself, but then everyone else shows up uh, as well. I know. I think. I, I, I think that Armida would have would have actually um, gone home. And this wasn't originally what I was going to do, but after that lovely art that Grant posted today, uh, I think Armida would have gone home and uh, sat on her swing attached to her giant tree that talks to her, and just sat there. Like you do. Unless somebody comes to get her, but other than that. And uh, so who, what, uh, TK, what did you roll? Sorry, I rolled a six. And Jim? One. I'm One. uno. G Galahad? <laughs> Four. Four. And <laughs> I'm going to assume Noah's already there. Babylon obviously is the one who knows. Look, I can sniff out a bar <laughs> <laughs> in another dimension. Yeah, I think it's like Pseudo would, would probably... Right, he, she's been looking for Galahad ever since the party, but because Galahad doesn't couch surfs, she's had trouble finding him. Uh, she's like, I guess I'll just go to Babylon's because she probably knows. Uh, and so like at some point, Pseudo would show up maybe as they're walking out two zeros or something like that uh, oh yeah yeah so like going babylon, the opposite direction yeah babylon sees her and is like a bachelorette on the other side of the street mm -hmm. hey! oh my god you missed the best party oh my god i mean was it the best i wasn't there I mean, it wasn't the best but it was a really good one okay you you should, here i got you a cupcake oh, oh my gosh i love these are these the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and she just like smears it into her baby <laughs> doll mouth. <laughs> so tell me, tell me what happened. Did anyone die? Uh, no, but and she pulls up her like hoodie and to reveal a wicked stab wound. Oh my I god! Got stabbed. You got stabbed. I did. I did. Oh my gosh! Congratulations. Lovers quarrel. It was oh, funny. that's so exciting. Tell me everything. Well, he came in and was just a total ass, and we we're like, you can't <sighs> be here. You could put the knife down and dance or something. You know, oh my I god. have disagreements, but you can't just bring a knife like that. Anyway, uh, Armida and Noah took care of him. Uh, quite handily and you know, it really was no fuss at all and then i got to spend the entire night getting drinks delivered to me while i sat on the couch and recovered so, oh that's the best really oh great. i'm so jealous yeah oh my gosh. Attention. Uh, like i said you missed a great one but you know there'll be others stabs me that's fine it's all right it's all right Kelly, how are you i've been looking all over for you oh yes uh well i was actually i was looking for babylon because i was a little worried about her, but uh, what's uh, what's going on? I uh, questions. I, I listen. I we can save it for later, but it involves a. Uh, uh, I to be quite honest. I don't, I don't want to down everybody, but there's a hate cyst that I became aware of recently, and I, I wanted to talk to you about it because I don't, you know, I, I don't think I should take this on by myself. But you know what? We can. It didn't hate sound as day. yeah. Yeah. There's some sort of spawn some kind out in the you know one of the more abandoned neighborhoods now we're we talking destruction or containment here for this thing i presumably would like to eradicate it entirely but uh like i said it's urgent but i don't want to derail us uh, entirely well i'm quite hungry actually uh yes i i am as well but i will be glad to assist you with uh, eradicating the hate cyst mm -hmm. excellent well i mean that's partly what I wanted to talk about. But you know what? We're already late, I think. Does anyone know where our meet is? The door to Zeros has opens in a wall for the party. Um, our meet is not there. Um, at least not yet. Um Archie has been trying to talk her down from the tree, but she's so high up she can barely hear him. There's a little weak voice. Please come down. I'm hungry. He's not floating anymore. No, he is not. Um, I did play another Soothe card, so uh, blue magic is uh, doubly strong right now. Um, and uh, 
Let me double check which one is a little weaker. Oh, red magic is stronger, so destructive magic and blue magic, which deals with dreams, is a little weaker. Um, and that's based on the party moving around. Um, but uh, our meetup will return shortly. So the party's in zeros. Uh, Noah's there. Uh, Noah, you are chatting up a Vizlay right now. Uh, essentially, you're debating with him about uh, his apostasy. Um, and essentially, you've had a few already. The good stuff. Uh, you and him had a book-eating contest because he also uh, claims to eat knowledge. But you can tell he really doesn't. He's just saying that. Uh, really putting you on. Um, and this individual, I have a little picture of him. Looks like Sean K. Reynolds um, from Monty Cook's team. It's actually his character from The Raven, Once What You Have. Um, so Saru, a weaver of the Cell of Glass... Who splinters into fragments is uh having philosophical discussions with you and you get you can tell this guy may or may not be completely devout in what he's preaching um but uh he's kind of your entertainment for the night it's kind of this hipster guy what do you do no, the rest Noah of the party's is there kinda, now as well kind of just tolerating him and he when he sees the rest of the party come in, he kind of just like just kind of stops mid sentence and turns away from this guy and kind of like puts a book up. So like, he's kind of like almost not wanting everyone else to see that he's there because he was just trying to like go somewhere quiet. He didn't even want to talk to this guy. Oh. This guy wouldn't, wouldn't leave him alone. Basically, Babylon. Any of his yeah. hints. Babylon, you recognize him immediately as a weaver of your cell. He, you and him are members of the same weaver cell. Um, the okay. cell, yeah, and uh, you know, he is essentially the founder, so he's a higher level weaver, 49th level Scientologist. Knows. What's that? Okay, yeah, <laughs> 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 no. I'm sorry, I just like <laughs> his thetans are over 9,000. <laughs> I need a minute. Just... Listen, if he. <laughs> If you want to build your own prison for yourself and live in this prison of ideas, that's okay. fine. But just leave me out of it, okay? He's a he says it's not about ideas, it's about feelings and it's about infinite feelings. This is art. It should go on. The feelings infinitely. are the bars that the societal construct uses to keep you from seeing what's really going on. You just can't handle feedback. I get it. Someone tells you your painting could be a little better, and you go, ah, no, it's perfect the way it is. And that's kind of what he says. No, and... I just don't care about anyone's feedback. Not that I can't handle it. Well, that's one way to live. It's just <laughs> meaningless. Yeah, just uh, like Babylon my... dislikes most people in authority and anybody who's, like, even slightly more powerful than her. So <laughs> I assume that she recognizes Noah's voice, too. Yes, you hear them debating ridiculously it's like oh it's God. like two art school dropouts yeah but no just enough to be dangerous you will like 100 percent go over there she'll like, noah hi and um hi I'm, I'm sorry are you looking for change like do you have a reason to be here and she's talking to the other weaver um you notice, like, half no, his no, arm like, goes like, damn, and, like, puts his book in front of his face. <laughs> half his arm seems to be made of, of glass. He he goes, oh, um, I guess. And, you know, and just kind yeah. of, it's one of these things where he, he seems confused and bewildered by you. Just, you know, this is like a party, you know, like a party situation where we're all sitting together, and you are just not in it so if you could like go literally anywhere else all right and he snaps Bye. his fingers and <laughs> gone he like rolls up like a lampshade and he's oh just my gosh gone. babylon actually like loves it and is super impressed by it but she tries not to show it <laughs> she like looks over at noah and she's like what are you drinking nerd you notice the lampshade um, unfolds behind her and, like, 
she doesn't see this yet, neither does Noah, but he's, like, making faces as he kind of, like, puts two eyes on him and walks out the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, the bartender said it was supposed to be ashes from a book that was never written, but I think that's just what he said to sell it. Doesn't taste very interesting. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, bartender, can we get, like, two more of those weird ash beer drinks? Thanks for the nerd. Thanks. Uh, you sure that's what you want? We got some other drinks. How about a white noise? Expensive? Well, your tab is always good here, Babylon. Okay, we'll take those. All right. Surprise me. So, yeah, Where they... Yeah, so, um... There, they serve two glasses. Um, there's a white liquid inside, and there's strange and exotic sounds coming from within. Noah like looks at it, rolls his eyes, and then drinks it in like one drink. You feel a sense of euphoria unlike any you've ever felt before. Like Noah has never had this sensation in his life. It is a feeling of pure joy. No, I like goes, ugh, I hate this drink. <laughs> it's got to be on brand. <laughs> I'll never order this one again. So where have you been? Is he asking Babylon? Is it, yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, you're, we're the only two people there, I think. So, yeah. Oh, no, I think Galahad and Python probably came in with her. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so well, where I, have you I've been? my own drink. Bar. I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, what? Galahad's going to actually go up to the bar with Python yeah. uh, and take a moment to to chat. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, out. Where's your weird girlfriend? I think if you're referring to Armida, she's probably at her house. And mm -hmm. we are not together because okay. that's just yet another construct that leads you down the path of being trapped okay yeah except you guys don't live together so you're not like trapped you could just go to your house i mean i'm not saying i don't think armida is an interesting person because obviously they are okay cool she's got a good personality i'll let her know i'll i'll let her down gently for you it's fine no feel free to never ever do anything for me when it comes to other people. And like, just a, so that'd be like a base rule between <laughs> our interactions that you never speak for me. And, and like, his, eye, have, his eyes have actually gotten really dark. Like he was like at first like kind of funny and now he's like actually getting like really serious. Uh, Babylon will like smile a big wide smile that takes up almost <laughs> all of her face. <laughs> and she'll just like... At the table, she's, I knew I liked you, nerd. <laughs> Noah, like, goes, like, he has, like, this look of, like, someone who has gotten himself into, like, on, like, a train and it's going to the wrong destination. And he's yeah. kind of, like, re a resigned sigh of, like, oh, And he, yeah. like, picks up another one of those drinks that he hates and goes sit down next to her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, like, just for insight for everybody that's known Babylon well enough. Babylon is like a teenage girl in that like the more mad or scared they get about a situation the more they like laugh and get excited and like smile and things like that just because they're like happy that anything interesting is happening and also <laughs> don't want to die sad. <laughs> so like when she smiles that big she's actually uh, a little scared. Like she's freaking out a little bit and is like whoo let's defuse this. <laughs> I don't. I didn't realize this would go this direction this quickly. This is a problem. <laughs> no. And no, it's uh, kind of like back in his chair, kind of like with that kind of like lazy attitude now, kind of just letting everyone else talk. Yeah. Okay. No. Um. Python, a familiar face is there. Brevish, the uh, short, well-to-do, uh, Beck-looking Vizle that you. Uh, Recall from the party, he seems to be hanging out there. Um, he's uh, he's having drinks with everyone's favorite goetic, uh, Charles Abernathy. Oh, 
a small world for us, Fizzly. Um, it should, Python will, will you know, give him a give him a nod, and and you know, if if they're if it looks like they're having a lot of fun or, or having a conversation, she's not going to go interrupt. She'll stay uh, having her drink with uh, with Galahad there. Um, Bravish, he didn't. Um, he didn't stick around long at the party, did he? Or was he there the whole time? You have the impression he left early for some reason. Bravish stayed mm-hmm. the entire time. Okay. I was thinking of someone else then. He helped apprehend uh, Paris. That's right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just, you know, hey there. But um... <clears throat> his eyes light up with a flicker of hope. And they kind of see Galahad and kind of look back at you. He motions for the two of you to come over. I'm gonna go see what he wants. Oh, oh why not? Uh, He's like, buy you a drink? Sure. I, I mean, I'm not here by, by myself, though, you know. Oh, no, I can see that. Uh, you're here with half a man. Hello, Galahad. <laughs> How's it That's going? a joke. Mm. How's the... Uh, I noticed. The... <laughs> Sorry. It's really... You should say it a second time. It might be funnier. Um... <laughs> Use that line in a couple bars. Um, but, uh... No, explain it again, please. <laughs> He's like, uh, so, uh, can I get you, uh, a Blue Danger? Blue Danger? Kind of turns to Charles Abernathy. He's like, slams his head. Charles looks like he's had way too much tonight. <laughs> Are you... This is a social gathering or something else? Uh, he ever since he saw that old pupil of his, he's been in shambles yeah. trying to figure out what he can do to help her. But uh, you know, yeah. not like him yeah. to be so attached. Yeah, why don't you go get us some drinks, there, buddy? Uh, no, they have waiters that do that. <laughs> and he snaps his <laughs> fingers and, <laughs> and uh, calls over a waiter. He goes, "But if privacy is what you'd like, uh, I'm happy to oblige." And he kind of. Toddles off. So, so Charles, how um, what do you think about Armida there? She's um, she's been going through a bit of a thing, wouldn't you say? To say the least, he says, and he's kind. Of, that you've never heard Charles' voice so weak. Hmm. Yeah, I saw the uh, I saw the pain in your eyes at the uh, party the other night uh, upon seeing her. Invisible magic is now stronger. Sorry, you played a soothe. Mm. Ooh, I like that one. Um, he goes, you know, I wasn't expecting to see her there. I I didn't even know she was back from Shadow, and mm. it's it's just one of these things. <laughs> seems odd right like some someone's done something to her since she came back it's i mean the rest of us made the transition back fairly uh uneventfully but <coughs> to be honest i'm worried about her i'd uh i'd been looking into it i started asking questions and i mentioned her name at the collection of the burning principality the library next to the old cathedral the one to the legacy. Yeah. I was attacked. I was attacked. I brought up her name. A seeker? Mm, no, no, no. Uh, not not that creature you had been uh, studying. But right. I brought up Armida's name and uh, the individuals I asked uh, leapt uh, in an aggressive manner at me and it almost seemed like they weren't acting under their own free will it almost seemed like they were under the effect of some sort of uh curse or some sort of uh yes they were being compelled against their will Hmm. so somebody's stealing memories from her and planting suggestions in others huh i mean who could be i mean who could even be powerful enough to do all of that I think we have some ideas, but I don't think uh, even this bar, um, uh, I don't think this uh, bar is safe to 
talking about that. I want to cut back over to Babylon and Noah at the bar. Noah so, has, like pulled out a little book and he's like holding it like kind of in front of his drink and takes a drink around the book. <laughs> Every once in a while he looks over at Babylon kind of like and looks back at his book. It's almost impossible to tell what Babylon is looking at because like her smile has encompassed most of her face oh, so you God. can't tell if she's <laughs> backwards or forwards. Um, it's just if if her fit this would be the top of the smile and then it just like around where the ears would be and down so she is looking forward but it's hard to tell like what she's thinking or whether she's got her eyes open or anything like that she's just smiling you know, kind of like snaps his book closed and goes ah, okay fine what do you think we should do next with all this well, and her uh, her big smile like starts to like fall back into regular conversation voice. So she's not <laughs> smiling like really big. It's not like <laughs> Grandpa Shark or anything. Um, but she'll hmm. Well, uh, I know there's like supposed to be a cultist or something, so we should probably kill that guy. Um, hmm. I know that there's supposed to be like a chamberman thing. We'll probably kill him. That's fine. Uh, we got to figure out whoever has all of Armida's memories so we can kill them. Um, That's you know what? a lot of killing. Is it? Does it? Does it have to be a lot of killing, or could I feel it be like maybe killing? Like I think you've jumped an order of things that we were gonna do. Like, okay. what if what if we like pre-killed? By talking, you know, like that's all. I mean, I feel like I'm dying right now. So, I mean, we should just do that to them first. She, she, so. like when he says that, she goes, ha 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 ha. <laughs> and he, even though, though he has like these dark eyes and teeth, he goes, Ooh. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's like a baby doll, like pulling the string on a baby doll. Yeah. Like, he laughs. You could tell she's being sarcastic. <laughs> um. So. I mean, I'm just having conversation here, so... Yeah, it looks super painful um, for you. Most conversations are, so... Oh, look, you told me something about yourself. We're growing. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> at any point uh, during the evening, do you attempt to uh, ask any of the other Vizsle at Zero's about very again. Um, Babylon that... will like point at somebody and be like, "Should we talk to him?" Because she's like now seeing how painful talking to other people that Noah even knows <laughs> is. So talking to a complete stranger, she's kind of like, "Is he gonna like lose his shit if I <laughs> if I just call a random person over here?" <laughs> Why would we talk to them? Talking without a reason is pointless. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. No wonder you don't have any friends except for the sad girl and her weird rat. Okay. So sometimes when you talk about pointless things, they lead to things that are less pointless. Like important things with a point. Oh. Let me show you. Yes. Let me let me just show you. Just watch. Just watch. Hey! Hey, you, you with the um, with the the hair, the hair it's, thing. Yeah, it's you. Bravish. Could you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Could you pat the guy next to you and tell him to come over here, please? Thank you. And go go over there. And so uh, a large, uh, it it it's like a walking forearm comes over, and, and uh, it just kind of toddles over, and it has two little eyes under where like the wrist would be. Dot eyes, and then a mouth, like, down here. And Hi, Babylon. He, what can I get for you? When he comes over, Babylon will yeah. start to lounge. And she'll, hey, um, look, I've just been wondering. Um, I'm trying to find this person, and I hear he's got some really good, like, you know? Um, the problem is I just can't find him, and he keeps hiding everywhere he's been. Have you ever heard of, what's the guy's name? 
like out of character. Variegan? Variegan. Variegan. Have you ever heard of someone called Variegan? Yes, he's a he's a Noima. He sometimes uh, he's a Numa. He kind of uh, used to frequent here, but uh, not so much yeah? recently. Oh Hasn't my been gosh, that's what people keep weeks. telling me. Oh my gosh, people keep telling me that I could find him here, and then I just never do. Do you know anybody who might know him? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, he might be at home. Oh yeah, where? Do you know where he lives? Do you know? I've just got like all of these orbs burning a hole in my pocket, if you know what I mean. And I just missed this amazing party last week. I am pretty disappointed. So you know. Buy me a drink, and I'll I'll uh, give you a, give you a, the grand tour of how to get there. And Noah has subtly like started like almost like mimicking Babylon's like body. Like lounging oh, body, no. and, like, <laughs> and like subtly adjusting how he's sitting too, kind of like almost like huh? taking notes. Does Babylon have any reason to think that this person would be deceiving her? It is incapable for four armed man to deceive anyone. His face does oh, not lie, <laughs> because it's hard enough for me to come up with wow. the truth when I'm doing this with my arm. Yeah, lie. <laughs> it's like yeah. he's got a finger crossed or something. Yes. <laughs> like, oh no! no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh at my own jokes. No, that's totally allowed. Yeah. And she'll just, oh yeah, buy anything you want from the bar. Tell him it's on me. Yeah, that's true. that's fine. He goes over and he orders, and they uh, he takes his hand and kind of flips the glass upside down. His mouth opens, catches. He's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. and he comes over, it, uh, and he gives you instructions on how you can get to Varigan's house. Um, it's on Dolahan Street, uh, mm -hmm. towards the middle of the road. You've been there before, actually. You've been to Dallahan. Dolahan is like mm -hmm. Dalahan, only slightly less bright. Desaturated. Nice. Get out. <laughs> Wait, guys. Um, yeah, and she'll just like, okay, well, thanks. Just let them know that, like, you'll drink whatever on my tab for the rest of the night. Um, don't go too crazy because, you know, I know where to find you. So, uh, uh, it, it is then that the Thanks. bartender asks Babylon if she can settle her tab because it's been quite some time and it is extensive. <laughs> be honest, I have no idea how much money Babylon has. <laughs> well, it's been about three weeks and you can add your income from your foundation. Uh, oh, just multiply okay, it times yeah. three. Uh, oh, so cool. the tab is currently at 7,635 orbs. Oh. That's Crystal. <clears throat> she has <clears throat> been partying hard. And Babylon. That's... I. You know what? Forearm, I, I got your yeah, drink tonight. Yeah, you know what? When I want your judgment, I'll go to church, okay? <laughs> we are already in church. It's in <laughs> the invisible church? <laughs> no, it's like, not me. You see that light of the suns? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I hate churches. <laughs> And Babylon will be like, yeah, sure, let me just, um, and she's already, like, out the door. Mm -hmm. She, like, <laughs> yeah. up and leaves. She's, gal! Uh-oh. <laughs> and he gets up and, like, goes over. Yes, what is it now? She's already, like, she's left. <laughs> she's gone. She went out the front door. <laughs> No, no, it still is in like the lounging posture for a second because he thinks this is all part of like interaction. Oh yeah, but then, but then he's like, oh, and he like, the bartender. The table, this is the best like, part of interaction, Lola. You're about to get. <laughs> <laughs> the bartender tacks a picture of Babylon on the wall, and it says, "Not welcome." <laughs> oh, Bad no. checks. Oof. <laughs> Noah goes over. Noah goes over to the bar, and he's like. This is for my drink. And puts it down, but it doesn't pay for Babylon's at all. And leave. That's not even Babylon pays for Babylon's drink. I don't expect anything different from any of you. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, before I chase, God. before Pseudo chases after uh, Babylon and Galahad and everything, she'll turn to Charles. <laughs> but Charles, uh, I know we don't know each other very well, but... Uh, you know, we have a mutual friend. What do you know about this uh, Varigan 
and uh, anything would be helpful. He uh, he was a member of a powerful group of Vizle that were studying all about the soul. It was really quite beautiful. Their work was rather brilliant. Um, a number of them have been slain. We have oh, found yeah. members of the Numa dead. Uh, no, they were they were separate. Um, my suspicion is they're being hunted by someone or something. A seeker of souls, certainly. Uh, we've run into it twice, I believe. Uh, specifically in connection with Limerence Street. What about the soul of a street or a neighborhood? Um, I... I'd really be curious to know more about that. Um, did you... Did you encounter the Seeker yourself, or was it another member of your party? Uh, another. I simply uh, I did a bit of research on their behalf. Looking out for them is all. Who? I think you know who, Charles. Our, uh... And she's not here, and she's left alone. Well, I was hoping that uh, she would be here, but she's difficult to get in touch with. Um, have you tried calling? Have you tried knocking on the door? Charles is like stumbling out. He's he's a drunken mess. He's like, someone's got to go find Armida, and someone's got to make sure Armida is safe. Home. I'll find her. No, no, you need to go home. You're in no condition to help anyone right now. Go home. I'll check on Armida. You'll be fine. And we'll talk later, Charles. And, and, yeah, and he goes, get some thanks. Rest. And he goes, and their drinks are on me. Their money's not good here. If they paid, you better give it back. Is everything on me? And then he uh, kind of uh, slumps over in the corner. And uh, a little <laughs> hand guy comes over and like starts thumbing through his pockets with a big meaty thumb. Um, <laughs> trying to fetch the money out. <laughs> yes. Um, so I assume the party, now worried, uh, potentially, for... Uh, Worried like, about Armida's well-being. Might want to keep a close eye on her. Uh, yeah. So Babylon, or sorry, uh, Pseudo walks out of the zeros, and I guess you know everybody's walking down the street or, or congregated or something. Um, and she'll call after uh, the first person that she sees. <clears throat> I, you know, I know that we're all anxious to get this uh, Varig and the Numa buttoned up, but uh, twice now. Uh, a, a ghost, a, a soul-seeking ghost, has found Armida, and I'm I'm really worried about her. Uh, and I and also Charles is quite drunk, and I don't. I'd rather beat him there, so that he doesn't go there and do something that uh, we all regret. So, Armida's knows what yeah. happens. Who knows, Charles? Yes. Oh yeah. man, I hope she has some food I at her place. I'm face. hungry. I saw it on his face at the. We bar. can head up to go dig on the way. The party finds Armida in full health, um, slightly forlorn. Um, Archie has been trying his best to take care of her. Uh, she does have amazing food at her place. Uh, it is the best food. Um, however, uh, I get a sense. Now, is the party agreeing to keep Armida under watch, or are you going to allow her to live alone? Uh, is someone going to try to move in with her, or is someone going to invite her over to stay? <laughs> that could only go so well. Both of these options sound terrible. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. I don't go have ahead. a home to look after. Go ahead. I can I can pop in on Armida and keep an eye on her. <gasps> oh my gosh, Gal! You two Ever. aren't married. <sighs> Um, no, I'll, if it makes it better with you, I'll just rent a room from her. Mm-hmm, that There's sounds better. Business transaction. Yeah. I know how you, you have old a renter. men get. <laughs> you what? How old? dare you? <laughs> Who are you calling old? You just went from s single and coy to creepy <laughs> overnight. <laughs> and, and, and Noah, Noah, he's like, I think we should ask Armida first before deciding that people are moving in with her. Uh, okay. Because you 
fucking no one's fucking moving in in my house. So well, I, mean, I think I'm sorry. No, no, listen, I know hand. how you and Armida are. I'm not trying to move in on her. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even whistle though. It's okay. It, it's you just care about, about her. I'm a friend. Trust me. I. It's, <laughs> I find it. I have never been this fought over in my life. <laughs> no, Archie's like watching like, this back and forth. Is like I will shit eyes. everywhere. I will shit oh my everywhere. gosh! I imagine and... both Gal and Babs are just going like, "Okay, I mean, shh, okay, shh, shh, nobody can live with your girlfriend." Okay, we say, "Okay." We don't say anything. We're just like, Psh, "Okay." <laughs> He just like rolls his eyes as hard as he can. Oh my gosh. Oh, we feel like the them. gravitational <laughs> shift. <laughs> we lose half a day. <laughs> it's that thing where like you see like the sun and the, the clouds are going past it really quick. Yeah. We can't see the sun. It's invisible right now. Oh. But, uh, the, but the cloud, yeah. Yeah. Armida, how are you? We missed you at Zero's. I'm just going to assume, by the way, that that entire conversation took place in front of me. It did. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to be like... <laughs> uh, I probably could find you a room. Uh, I'm sure if we look hard enough, there's a guest room somewhere. Yeah, with minimal ghosts. I don't, I don't mind. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am not, in fact, afraid of any ghosts. I mean, There's a ghost Dan, there that is quite fond of Galahad. It's true. Mm, that is true. Dan Dan knows most of the house. He's feeding Archie right now. Um, is he feeding him on time? He's feeding no, him too much. He is. I kind of forgot to feed Archie for like a while. <laughs> is that how he lost all his hair? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, did I make him lose all his hair? It's okay, Armina. We're just it's a joke. I was just trying to I mean, it okay. looks like an improvement. I mean probably. Yeah. I yeah, I mean hair, it's dander and you gotta vacuum it up and it. Yeah. I mean he seems pretty fine with no hair. Um, so, and she just starts kind of wandering off in one direction. She's like, I think Dan's over here. Um, he can, there, yeah, I think there's guest rooms. And, like, as you're wandering through the house, I mean, there's just doors when you open them, there's just a wall. Um, there's doors when you open them, there's stairs that end in nothing, like just black pits. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. not a safe house to kind of wander around in. No, not at all. And at some point, I like to think that Aaliyah would show up um, and just start walking with everybody since Galahad's with us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, kind of sheepishly behind. Known. Should have known. Galahad's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Aaliyah, like, like leans and is like, I wish. Babylon knows how to, like, put in her head. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, fans. um, uh, where have you guys been? We went to go have lunch. Yeah. We, we, we thought you'd be there, I guess. At uh, the Godega? No, I think we wanted to go somewhere new. Yeah. Totally sucks. We're going to the Godega next time. I mean, it doesn't, if you, if you find something that tastes good, I don't think you need to go anyplace new. Uh, but, no. Not for food, at least. Yeah. Um, but we missed you there, and so, uh, you know. That's nice. Thank you. Are you okay? Has anything happened? Strange question. No. I sat in my chair. again a banister, kind of like an, in like an imitation of the earlier, like, Babylon posing. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with the banister is that it's moving, <laughs> Noah. And then he like kind of does like that, that slip, but like probably pretend like nothing happened. Like it's kind it's... of like it doesn't look like it's moving, but it's like kind of sinuous, rearranging itself. Um. So, 
I went and I talked to Mitri. And then I talked to Archie. And then I asked Dan to find me some more of those cupcakes. Those are really good cupcakes. Does Babylon see what's going on here? <laughs> like, <laughs> am, I, am I smelling what she's cooking? <laughs> she has been stoned out of her mind for like 24 hours, yes. Cool. Babylon is like way less concerned now. Not Okay, she was at like a 7 and now she's at like a 2. Yeah. So Armida just kind of goes, I am so hungry. Are you, are you guys hungry? Did you already eat? Oh my gosh! Could we have okay. some omelets with cheesy omelets? bits in them and bacon and ham? Can we with like the the, the little bits of the cheese that kind of sticks to the pan? Yes, so and some green chilies. Oh my gosh! Let's go. <laughs> let's do it. As she will go running off in a random direction, which you can only assume is the kitchen, but you're never I hope quite so. sure. <laughs> Babylon's like following her because they're like stoned besties. N Noah actually follows them, and then like he kind of takes his jacket off and rolls up his sleeves, and he's like, "I got this," because he used to work so many brunch shifts back back in Shadow, and starts like making up like French omelets, but Ooh, like just like you know just motion, it's almost not even looking. I love Noah's shadow skill of omelet making. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great skill to have, man. It is. And, he, and he's like holding the pan. He's like tapping it on the side as it rolls up onto the plate. And he's kind of looking at body and he like shoves it. He's like, order up. <laughs> <laughs> and Armida just kind of looks at Noah with these gigantic eyes and she was like, this is fantastic. You didn't tell me you knew how to cook. Oh my God. Yeah, it's not the most useful skill here. I mean, if you can cook, why do you eat books? No, like, it's about the answer. Then he just, like, starts on the next omelet. <laughs> Avalon doesn't say anything. She gives him, like, a curt nod. But when she turns around, uh, it, her smile stays on the back of her head. Sort of like, a, oh, you have breakfast for your girlfriend. That's really sweet. She doesn't say anything. It's just like that smile just stays just like a huge cheesy smile. And like as he's cooking the next omelet, there's like black veins growing from the sides of his eyes, like and just like frustration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Archie, Archie comes in and like sits up on the table next to me, and I assume is pretty gloomy because this isn't anything he could try to steal. Oh, unfortunate. It's not food for the cat. It's not going to stop him though. With that, Archie. we switch game modes from kind of moment to moment to narrative. Is there anything else the party is going to be doing? Uh, prior to investigating Varigan's house. No. And when would you like to investigate it? The next day? The next week? It's up to you guys. It might be that uh, new roommates have been around for a little while before you go. Uh, it may be you're going ASAP. But it's really up to you. Hypothetically, what is the best time of day to hide a body? On the that time street? in which the least, least amount of people are looking. So it's mm. hard to tell. So you'd assume at night uh, there would oh. probably be less people. With that said, it's very difficult to hide a body. Why do you need to hide it? Look. You can wear it like clothes. We could wear it. We could <laughs> live in its house. It's We're the cultists that... now. <laughs> All right. The real cultists were the bodies we inhabited along the way. Yes. <laughs> I'm, about the I'm not sorry. <laughs> about the Suddenly only thing... the game takes an even darker turn. I'm ready. <laughs> but the only thing I would want to do is just let everyone else know about this hate cyst that... Um, that pseudo they want you to go deal with. Of. Nice. I just like, listen, I'm going to go deal with this. I would appreciate the help, but I understand if you don't want to put your lives on the line. No, um, it goes, hate cyst? It's yeah. A, it's, it's, a, it's a leftover from the war, I think. I, my memory's fuzzy. I, don't, I just know it's causing a lot of problem out in some of the abandoned neighborhoods. And Ooh, uh, to be perfectly honest. honest uh, what, uh, what kind of the problem? Way what kind well, of problems? Well, it spawns things. A cloud of knives, I think. I have... What? what? Anyway. 
No, I'm just going to go, go on. And, you, know, and <laughs> you, you want to go for a hike up a mountain? You know, you it's not my neighborhood, like is it? <laughs> uh, I don't think it's your neighborhood, but, you know, if you don't oh, deal with oh, it, you're not a hand, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, no. but it's that red. sounds like something for the city council to deal with. Okay, fine. Well, I, I've been asked to, to deal with it. And I, you know, I'm quite that honestly. sounds like a great detour on the way to Barrigan's. Oh, my gosh. Be. And we could take some of those knives. There could be knives there. I, I mean, I Grant, think we I, owe it to pseudonym to help because they got stabbed. Sweetie, it's okay. eat a cupcake. And yet here. they still want to go towards a cloud of knives. Listen, a stabbing yeah. is, uh, <laughs> it, you get over it. Armida, if we really? take so knives, she picks they up a knife off the table. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. You have to have like abs, like pseudonym does. You have to go work out with. Come with pseudonym, me to work show out me with your abs. If you lift up her hoodie, you know, tastefully, <laughs> not like this <laughs> or anything. <laughs> Armida pokes her, like oh. yeah, yeah. Uh, like you could come with us to uh, uh, to Chad's. We could lift. It'd be great. Our job. No. They they make you drink juice like all the time. Don't do it. It's fine juice. It's yes. made from fruit and Chad healthy things. Oh, it's Noah fun. loves Chad. You should totally go to the gym with Chad. Actually, yeah, Babylon. What? Noah like accidentally burns the omelet he's working on when he hears that. They're gonna go work out with Chad. Babylon. He goes in the garbage and starts over. I don't think you're telling me the truth. Talk about. You're right. I am lying to you. I'm sorry. I'm just hung over. It's okay. I, I regardless, come with me or not, so to to the Chads or or the the uh, the abandoned. Yeah, let's go steal some knives. Um, I just wanted to let you know because I I intend to deal with it. Uh, would appreciate the help and thought maybe it would be a good opportunity to learn something new or, at the very least, um, I got to be honest. I'm spoiling for a fight. And she like at that, it's like, just sort of like she stretches and is just you know. It's been too long. I would like to hurt something. Wow. Well, then what better way to work out that aggression than on something Ooh. a hate cyst? It's yeah. like a cancer. Before it was like into hate sex. Oh, sure. whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Omelets. No, it's like wiping out the pan. Noah's wiping the pan out and he like puts a cloth between it before he puts it with the other pan so it doesn't get scratched and ruin the coating and he goes I don't want to not not hurt something today. She will appear right behind Noah and be like, are you doing my dishes? No, no, you just have to store them with the cloth between them. I cook the omelets. I don't do the dishes. <laughs> By the way, this is also <laughs> Kelly's amazed face. <laughs> what are you talking about, Kelly? You don't put pieces of cloth between <laughs> your dishes to keep from getting chips? So you put you put the no, cloth no, this on is between, this is the a cloth between a black, a black steel omelet pan. Listen, guys, I got in trouble because I used to put my husband's high-end chef knives in the dishwasher. So, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. I don't know what that means. Cloth I would do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, cloth and pans, not a, not so a thing. So, like, do you put the cloth in the pan when it's still dirty? No, because if you're using it correctly, like there's nothing sticking to it because so you, it's, it's like the cast iron thing. You don't. Yes, it's like it. cast iron, but it's a carbon black steel. Which and then is you not just put it game. up. <laughs> so, and so then you 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 put it up in the the cupboard. Yeah, the store. you wiped it. You've wiped it out with a mm -hmm. cloth, and then you put the cloth. A, a, uh, so you cleaned it and then put it away. Yeah. You playing a uh, soothe card for when the next scene begins. <laughs> with um, invisible sun. Wednesdays at 8 p.m. EST. I like that, that whole thing was just for Babylon to get him to admit that he did the dishes. <laughs> Silver magic's currently ascending. Gold magic is descending at this point. We played the banished serpent card. Um, this is for when we set the next scene. Uh, what time of day were you going to vary against? If you go there, because we needed to make sure if there was anything else you were doing before. Early morning. To get to the hit, uh, to answer. Can we kill something before we go there? Let's go kill this this thing. That yeah, we might need extra knives. To go I, so let me answer the question. It It is a 10-day trip to get to the hate cyst. It's and then a, 10 days to get back. Yeah, you're going to have to go deep into Saturine to get there. It's not uh, something that's nearby. Perhaps my enthusiasm um, just mis you know misrepresented myself. I, it is a it is a trek and would be quite the endeavor, but it's an excursion. No, it's like we're 
time really doesn't mean anything anymore. So yeah, it's true. It is. It's a meaningless construct. She says sarcastically. Mm. You know, it like nods, like but like thinking that she's like just totally agreeing with him. <laughs> so. Fucking. Now I have to be here just shaking. Armida his is going to get uncomfortably close to Galahad. Can't you do something about the time? I can do a few things about the time. I don't <laughs> like it though. Don't let her smell you. Uh, Galahad, you could probably get us there quicker right um well i could get me and maybe one other person there quicker which brings me back to the point of hiding the body if we needed to take it somewhere i could maybe ah. assist with that. whose body are we hiding i don't know i've just babs brought it up I just, I you know just in case just in case maybe very good just yeah, in case but isn't very good someone we just want to talk to <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we not killing him? I thought we were killing him. Gal? I didn't want to... I didn't... <sighs> you just got back. I just didn't you... want to... I didn't want to squash your dreams. Fine. But no, we're not going to kill him. It's just... Not... Armida will very, very... Um... <laughs> will that one, but... Really? <laughs> Armida will very sympathetically go up to Babylon and kind of put her arm around her and go, Did you want to hurt something too? I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll just hurt something else. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. It's fine. Didn't ruin my life or anything. It's fine. I'm happy. No, no it takes like a really exaggerated step to the left away from Babylon. I vote we go to Verigans in the morning, by the way. It's a, oh. it seems like a morning endeavor. Social call. I think I have probably got a big enough room in here for everybody to stay over. <sighs> okay. With okay. that, everyone receives a point of joy for a sleepover <laughs> together. For a sleepover. Except <laughs> Noah, who gets a point of despair. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> despair. despair. Babylon is absolutely wearing one of those 1960s 90s with the little puffball strings on them. And she, like, has taken her weird plastic hair out of the, the ponytails and put it into, like, a sleeping beehive. For the slumber party. Aww. No, it just leaves his suit on. <laughs> Ties the necktie tighter. Oh, oh tighter. <laughs> <laughs> Sews himself into a sleeping bag. <laughs> it's like the Quaker's bundling. He like, sews himself into the sheets. It's like a mummy bag, so he like draws the little <laughs> the little <laughs> I think you broke Jim. <laughs> we lost him. <laughs> oh no! I'm back, baby. <laughs> Poor Noah. Oh, it's good. It's good. Uh, sleepover sounds great. Uh, uh, Sudo has a uh, flannel PJ she'll she'll put on. Uh, she keeps him in her workout bag. You mean? Oh, I should probably find something to wear when I'm sleeping. It's a sleepover. <laughs> and she suddenly just veers off and goes up the stairs <laughs> to like go find something. Avalon keeps her smile on Noah, but yells up the stairs, What do you usually wear? <laughs> I don't usually sleep. Oh, damn. That would have been really interesting, and now I'm just bored. So the camera cuts to uh, the next morning, um, <laughs> and we are in front of Variakin's house. It's sort of narrative mode, so this is, you know... Imagine it fades to black, it fades up. Uh, you are on Dolahan Street, uh, and the party uh, is uh, roughly uh, where, for our man instructed, uh, the house would be. Uh, you notice the lawn is completely overgrown. Um, there is a small single-story brick building. Um, uh, sitting, uh, there is a door in the front. What do you do? There's no gates, it's just an overgrown lawn. And you're in the middle of Far Town, so it's relatively safe. You know, there's like Thaw enforcers and uh, the Garrett's constables, so it's, you know. Take a look around. I'm not worried about this guy bolting, are we? Perhaps. Do you, I mean, uh, are you going to check to see if there's a rear exit, side exits, or anything like that? That's, yeah, I'll, that's be, I'll, be, I'll be right back. And Gal mm -hmm. just kind of disappears, and he's, I'm just going to far step on the other side of the house. 
Mm -hmm. There is a, yeah, there is a door in the back of the house. Uh, anyone that circumnavigates it. Yeah. And, and Galahad just blinks. Um, he's, he's gone. You, you can't see him. Um, it's frustrating to race Galahad. He's, he can move very quickly. Um, and there is, um, does anyone circumnavigate the house? Because there is a small, it almost looks like uh, as you kind of peer, it's a screen door. It looks like there's a kitchen. As Python slowly walks around the overgrown uh, grass, uh, the air is very crisp. It is, uh, you know, it, it's early, early autumn, as it always is here in Firetown. Um, you see Galahad in the back. He spotted the door. You see some windows, but you, you notice there's only uh, a front door and a back door. The back door is a narrow screen door. The front door um, is just a large wooden door. Somebody should probably wait out back in case they try to run. I can go. Noah walks around to the back. <laughs> yeah, Babylon is like pulling a knife out of her pocketbook, like her little tiny pocketbook, and she's like ready. She's like... Where did you get that? The house. I don't think Give we'll... it back. Be all right, Is that one of my knives? No. Oh, okay. So if Noah and, and uh, Gal are sort of at the back, then I guess I'll I guess Sudol has come back to the front. We should just go in, maybe? Or knock on the door, at least. You knock on the door. Uh, no one comes to the front of the door. Uh, but alas, um, you do hear some movement inside. Those of you at the back door also hear movement inside coming from the back door. There's at least one person inside. It doesn't open, though. <clears throat> and, <laughs> excuse me, is uh, Varigan inside? There's no answer. Um, would you like to try the door? I'll try the handle. Just, like, gently uh, touch it. Hand, yeah, handle's very clearly locked. Um, those of you in the back notice there is no locking mechanism on the back door. It's just a pull handle that looks mm. like it can push and pull. No, looks over at Galad. He's like, so this is going great. Hmm. Can Babylon see in the house at all? Like through a window or like a crack or anything? Mm, you could walk up to the screen door. Okay. So if she if she like walks up to the screen door and just kind of like peers, can she see anything? Um, you see a shadow moving in the front room. Um, and you do hear kind of almost as a response every time python speaks uh there's some movement and there's some motion almost as if it's being extra cautious almost as if it, as if it doesn't trust whoever's outside uh i would like to go fishing with babylon's aggregates and use mm -hmm. diamond and lust to essentially uh m pull inside and attract it to her and give it like a sense to gravitate it to her and give it a sense of safety okay. to where she okay. is. Cool. Uh, so describe how this looks in the fiction and uh, essentially um, how does the magic look? Cause you're going to weave and for our viewers, weavers are artists and they create these amazing magic spells in a different mm -hmm. manner than the rest of the players. I describe it as um, her going fishing. It's kind of like what she does is she reaches into her pocketbook and she pulls out a corded phone with like a long uh, cord to it. And she just kind of, hello, you should come out here. Don't worry. Everything's going to be just fine. Come hang out with me. We'll have a great time. Uh, and you, in, yeah. okay, it's it's going to be two sorcery points to cast that spell. Um, All right. Go ahead and roll a ten-sided die. Let me know what you get. Zero through nine. Oh, Zero geez. low, nine high. Watch me screw this up. This is just to see if your eyes turn purple for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, that's cool. 
Okay, so she got a one and then a seven. Okay. Um, so a large silhouette comes hurling through the kitchen. It breaks through the back screen door and a, uh, like a large low sofa. It has eight spindly legs that have grown through it and giant mandibles has just been lured and attracted by you as you've tapped into it with your magic. Um, and it is coming after you. So I need you, uh, are you going to, st- uh, essentially try to dodge it are you going to try to take the brunt of the blow and try to redirect it but this is like a large sofa with eight spindly legs and uh mandibles is, has come down and has leapt at you and it just breaks through that back door oh lord um i'm gonna say that she goes ahead and uses one of her ephemera. Can I do that? No. Uh, it has oh, the jump on you, and you either need to let it hit you, or you need to dodge. Then Unless the ephemera she'll... says you use it as a response. Do I? I do not. Um, but she'll she'll go ahead and what, when she casts the spell, she has like full confidence in like telling this thing that it will be safe with her, so she doesn't know yet that it's gone wrong if it has gone wrong so she'll still be standing there so and i'll explain this to the players as well uh the actuality is a pretty cool place but there's a concept of viruses and viruses infect the actuality this is a spidering virus where all the objects in the house begin to grow eight legs, uh, mouths, and attack and destroy everything. And eventually, one day, the house itself will become a spider. Not unlike Noah's house, except Noah's house has good days, uh, not just bad days. Um, so, um, I need you to roll a, a d10. and Because it's just going to come out and hit you. And you can uh, dodge or withstand, uh, but we'll see what happens. she's withstanding with a three so we'll see how that goes it does not go well so you're going to take some damage do you have any armor and armor rating at all uh not to my knowledge so no all right so what happens is um you take three injuries from uh the physical attack and that becomes one wound uh now that you have a wound you have a scourge in all of your certes uh stat pools which means uh and a, uh, a, a, so it's a little harder for you to do uh, physical actions because you are essentially wounded. Um, and with the, you also take another two injuries. So if you get injured again, you're, you become wounded. Uh, or, uh, you, yeah, you'll be wounded a second time. Uh, mechanically in the game, if you suffer three wounds, you die. Um, now, when a Vizlay dies, it's not like Dungeons & Dragons or other games. You might become a ghost. Um, you might pass into the gray. Uh, there's actually Sweet. many great and extraordinary things that can ha- happen to you when you die in Invisible Sun. However, uh, it is probably best to not <laughs> try to not die. So you see uh, Babylon just get smashed by this giant uh, spider-legged sofa uh, that is trying to eat her full on. Uh, and now in the front of the house, right? No, it came from the front. It came smashing out the back where there was the screen door. Well, which side was uh, Babylon on? Was she on the front or the back? She, Sorry, Babylon was in front. Yeah. Okay, then it smashed through the front. So Python's okay. there, and Babylon's and there. Yeah. And Armida. Yeah. So they're all there. <laughs> but me and Galahad can't see this. No, but you can definitely hear it, and you can see through the screen door. Oh, here's why I thought she was in the back, because I thought she was peering through the screen door and scanning. Sorry. That's okay. I mean, if if you want to ignore it, it's fine. No, I'm just kidding. So I'll let you decide. You want uh, Babylon, would you prefer to be in the back or the front? It could be you peer through the back, then move to the front and cast the spell through the front door. It's up to you. Uh, nah, she would have, she would have been... Well, she, regardless, she saw it and she cast it, but she would have probably not moved to the back. She probably just would have seen it from the front. Is fine. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Wherever she is, she is in the front because wherever she cast it, she wanted like someone with, like Python to be with her. That makes sense. In case it <laughs> went poorly. You all see in the back, you just see like a huge wall of light appearing. And as it kind of casts through the house, you can kind of see this mangled silhouette of a humanoid uh, that is now illuminated on the floor of the house, uh, just face down, uh, most likely very again. Um, and uh, with that, um, we're going to let uh, Armida go, then Babylon, then Python, then Galahad, then Noah, just kind of in that order, largely just because that's your cameras, but you can decide. And if you want to change your order, and then other things will go. <clears throat> so we're all seeing these lovely spidery things, which doesn't make me happy at all. So um, Armida will take a step back and she will begin to call up her chains that she has. Um, so basically you see the, the chains kind of start snaking up from her feet and all the way around her body until they wrap around her head. And it's like a Medusa kind of thing. Um, I don't know if I can both summon those and attack in the same turn. Uh, uh, you can summon. So um, <clears throat> what level so are they there. going to be? Um, those are... Hold on, I forgot to pull up the spell card. I want to say they're two. Okay. I think they're two. So that's two sorcery points, correct? Mm-hmm. All right, so there are two, and uh, I would lose them if I roll a zero at the end of my next turn. Okay. Uh, they are they are now up. So they can't attack. You can only summon them. Um, <laughs> but they're up and ready now. Uh, it's Babylon's turn. Uh, Babylon's having a bad time. <laughs> Just kind of like hanging out on a, on a front step with a, a couch spider attacking her. Um... She's not really thinking on her feet, so she's kind of just... Honestly, I I don't think that there's anything that Babylon could or would do, especially since this thing doesn't cast any magic or anything. Will you try so to she... get different distance from it, or would you just yeah, stay there? She's gonna, yeah, she's going to try and, and get out from under it. You do. You manage to do that. So you, you get out from under it, you're able to kick it off of you. Uh, and you're able to create some distance between yourself and it. Mm. That's not rolls. Okay. That's you essentially can create some distance. Okay. So it has to now decide between multiple targets. Um, yeah, she'll absolutely do that. Jim. So <clears throat> seeing this uh, thing, this couch monster, burst through the wall and attack uh, Babylon, I'd like to have Pseudo flip it on its back. You know, like, you know, it's like a if it's a couch, maybe there's that weird area where it's like <laughs> can't quite tip one either way and can't get its feet underneath it. So I don't know if if she needs to just like flip it up or if she can like knock it off balance. But she wants to try to flip it on its back at, at least. Okay, yeah, and uh, just uh, when someone takes a wound, you play a sooth card, and the sooth card I played was Nemesis. Uh, you may be familiar with that one. Nemesis is minus one to all actions, minus two if your heart is linked. I believe it is currently on the red sun. I can confirm. Uh, I ignore it. What's the... Uh, what are the connections? Uh, are heart connections. So the heart connections are uh, Raven's family. Secrets, Raven's Books, Flame. Okay. All right. It's the devil card. The devil card. All right, all yes. right. Um, and how do we get Sortilage back? Is that just like a pool that refresh, refreshes? Yep. Uh, so everyone should have all... Everyone's... All your pools should be refreshed from the last time you spent things. So whatever okay. you spent, everyone started this encounter with full pools. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I'd like to flip it over and see if we can't disable it that way. All right, so go ahead and roll a... Are you spending any binet? Are you trained uh, this, in flipping things? Is this... Uh, I am not trained in flipping things. I am It'd trained be physical. In, actually, I am trained in breaking objects, if that... That, <laughs> I, that helps, yeah. You, <laughs> you're breaking this thing. I, um, that works. 
Yeah, maybe if maybe it's maybe it's like flipping it over, but but not quite gently. Just seeing how uh, how much damage you can do, and hopefully knocking it on its back. So, uh, what is that? Is that uh, accuracy or physicality for this? Because physicality is like strength and, and sort of like how. I think this is going to be. Uh, so, what were the two options you gave me? Is I just is it accuracy or, or physicality? Oh, this is phys- physicality. All right, yeah, definitely going to spend some uh, from that. I'll spend two from that. So that gives me what plus two to my roll. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, it lowers the. One. Yeah, so it's going to lower the challenge essentially. It'll add gotcha. to your adventure. Gotcha. Um, so I will do that, and um, I'm going to spend a sortilege to counteract the effect of the soothe card if I can. Um, Is that sure. how? Or do I, or do well, I, here's how it'll work. You'll get a roll multiple die. There you go. Right. You're penalized in your actions right now. Eight, in the first roll. Uh, you have flipped it over, and mm-hmm. as you flip it over onto its back, um, you know the the cushions start to rip and tear um and uh it is now on its back but you're not sure how long it's going to stay there all right uh and she'll call out for noah and galahad all right noah and galahad what you do you're in the back um now my um my displacement ability it's within sight so if i'm run up to the screen door i can see in the house right not only that you can see from where you're at because of all the light coming through it's kind of obscured but you can see through to the other side okay your eyes are just that good (laughs) yeah i look at Noah and i'm like i'm gonna go in the house and he disappears now do you want to go out through the other side or do you want to be in the house still no i want to be in the house and be right over the, the the humanoid form I want to see what that is. Okay, so uh, when I appear, I have my I have my trusty uh, my my trusty apparatus like scanning it. <laughs> oh, little, nice. little sounds are like we weeing off of it, and he's adjusting his lenses. Mm. You yeah, and, and you can tell that uh, there's some hefty magic on this dude. He's probably not the most powerful Vizle, but he was carrying some some items, um, and I'm going to. Uh, send those over what those are uh and at any point during the battle you might uh be able to do that uh there's also a scrap of paper that uh is sitting in his hand um okay. now i need you as you're examining to uh essentially take either a dodge or withstand action as a tea kettle comes flying across the house and try to latch onto you um, so the way this works is you can use movement, um, you roll 10 sided die, uh, and you just have to roll higher. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm all about that movement. So, uh, yeah. yes, I mean, I have a three in movement. I'm good at that. Um, all right. I did not mean to click that twice. So I rolled a seven. So that's a you totally, yeah, you totally just slip in this little spidery tea kettle trying to <laughs> get, get its little uh it's like mrs potts gone rabid no um she's uh yeah angela lansbury voices the spider teapot uh no it it totally kind of whiffs gone crazy from the death of chip oh my god <laughs> darn you chip she had to put chip down <laughs> then turned into a spider herself uh dark uh noah you're on deck so Noah sees him run to the house and hears all this crashing in the front and kind of like runs his hand through his really unruly hair and sighs and kind of like walks around the side of the house with like his hands in his pockets and then looks and sees like the tableau in front of him and like all, kind of like closes his eyes and all around him like you see like flickering of like the outlines of pages from books and then little by then it seems even though you don't see a sun that all the shadows are sharper for a moment as if there is a light from one side and then little bits of all the shadows start to leach and leave like your shadow in the shadows of trees and stuff all like detach and start to like stream in like particles towards this couch and then cluster all around it. And then inside of that darkness, you hear like this sound of like ripping and tearing and Noah is casting bleeding darkness. 
Which so, is a level three plus one die. All right. Uh, is he casting it on something in particular? He's, he's casting it on the couch. Okay. Um, the all right. So go ahead and roll a uh, ten sided die. Um, I'm gonna... And your and spell, spell lowers it. the ability to uh, it. Uh, Pruitt, I also sent that uh, message to you in Discord to make it a little easier to read. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but yes, yeah, so alas, um, yeah, your sorcery will make it a little easier to attack this thing. So, okay. what did you get? Oh, I rolled the wrong dice. Sorry, I rolled a d twenty instead of a d ten. Uh, one second. Roll. I got an eight and a nine, so I definitely succeed at that. Hundred so percent. Yeah. It does th- four damage every round, and then I have to up do the depletion of zero to keep it going. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've you you're tearing that couch apart. You notice it seems highly resilient, though. Um, you're still ripping this it. This is an ongoing effect. Yes, yes. It's it's one of these things where. Uh, you have it. Um, it's uh, hopefully you can you can tear it to shreds before it does more damage, because um, another hit, you know, could very well if it gets Babylon could could take her out altogether. Um, though she has created distance. Uh, so now uh, things go. Um, the teapot has already taken a swing at Galahad. Uh, the couch is going to try to flip itself back over. And uh, attack Python. Python, I need you to either dodge or withstand. Yeah, I'm going to dodge with that three movement Benny that I picked up uh, before. <laughs> All right, <laughs> go ahead, spin them. Yeah. My, uh, my uh, uh, movement. All right. <clears throat> so that's going to be what? Plus, this the Benny are the ones that are the plus to the roll, yes? So you spend a Benny, uh, mm-hmm. kind of like a little point, like a little token, and okay. it, it'll add to your venture. Gotcha. All right. Well, let me do... This thing looks pretty beastly, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do one. I'll just spend okay. one. Okay. Uh, so that was four uh, for that. And then plus whatever the benefit from the NA is. Um, so... I keep wanting to refer back to, like, cipher rules for this. My brain is always like... So, oh. yeah, you, you managed to get out of the way. Now, uh, what, what heart are you, though? I am, uh, my heart is uh, ch- 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 Notions, Cats, Clocks. Because I'm an ardent. Okay, you're good. All right. You, you. Yeah. She, uh, what does it look like? So I guess, like, when she uses it, this is her, this is actually, like, the first time she's ever called upon the serpent. And, um, uh, you know, she's sort of dodging out of the way. She's a trained uh, warrior, but there's this um, this benefit from the serpent sort of manifests as a, uh, a flash of a prismatic uh, cobra hood that kind of comes up around her head and momentarily sort of superimposes itself over her, uh, like over her body. It's this looks like uh in some light it looks like jet black but then in others it's this kaleidoscopic uh chromatic serpent that uh coils itself around her as she dodges out of the way all right that's amazing and so you you know zip zaps up <laughs> a far less poetic way uh <laughs> the most grant ellis as opposed to jim davis way of describing something yeah he zip zaps zapped right out of there what were you expecting um <laughs> yeah rainbow snake um you you are you are gone uh a uh noah you notice an a a gm shift occurs and you're going to gain a point of despair as yes. the tie around your neck grows fangs and legs pop out of the ties and your own tie tries to eat yourself uh, and it turns into a spider. So I need you to attempt to uh, withstand. Okay, that's just a D10 of probably physical? Uh, yes. All right. 
and I can spend physical points to help it make it easier. Yeah, so what you'll do is you spend a point, and then uh, when you roll your die, you'll get to add that to the die roll. All right, so I'm going to spend a point of physical, and I got a 10. Or a zero. A nine plus one? Yeah. Okay, yeah, nine, nine plus, plus one. one. Yep, you uh, you easily just kind of like, oh, no, you don't, little guy, and you retie him. No, <laughs> um, yeah, you managed to, to it. avoid getting attacked. Uh, by your tie. Uh, and uh, a dresser comes hopping out of the bedroom, also with spidery <laughs> legs and fangs, um, and it is lurching towards the front of the house. Um, and uh, question for the party, do you want to continue combat? Or do you want to call it there and resume combat first thing next week? I'm asking you because combat can continue for however long it lasts. Um, it'll probably be another 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how it goes. Your call. I, if it's going to be just a little bit longer, I don't, I don't mind finishing up, but I got no problem breaking in the middle of combat either. Mm -hmm. Wishy-washy. Fence sitter. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice cliffhanger. I'm fine with it being a cliffhanger then. What about you, Galahad? I like to think Armida saw his tie start to attack, and she like started to throw out one of her chains to grab his tie. Straight at yeah. my throat. <laughs> she she pulls his tie off, and then Babs' eyebrows go up and down. It's like, I, mm, mm. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, like Babs is a little preoccupied with like her imminent death. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's probably she's probably not super into the subtext right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think uh, Galahad would see the dresser coming down. He's fighting off this tea kettle, uh, and he's just going to yell out, We've "Got more people coming to the tea party, guys!" And uh, I think it's oh my God. it's okay to it's okay to just uh, call it a cliffhanger for the. So for the we'll fade there. Make notes about your character for different things that may have impacted their joy, despair, etc. Um, and we'll call it there. Uh, just sort of how your character was changing. Um, Naturally, uh, this combat will also determine that. So uh, that is this week's episode of Invisible Sun. I'm going to give a shout out to our sponsor, Tabletop Loot, uh, who is doing a good job of promoting both the game and hanging out in chat. Uh, do hit them up. Use the code WebDM15 for 15% off dice shirts, mugs, etc. Um, let's go around to our yeah, let's go around to our cast and uh, see how they enjoyed tonight's session. So let's begin with. Um, Jordan. <laughs> I thought it was great. I enjoyed both the um, awkward conversations with Babylon, because I think that is a great back and forth between Noah and Babylon. Um, and then I, this is a fun, weird fight, too, with the fucked up Ikea. So. <laughs> and Pruitt. Uh, yeah, I, uh, this, this is, uh, this is rather exciting, mostly because Gal is not really built for combat. Uh, he has some, a few tricks up his sleeve, but, uh, we'll see what he, what he does now that, uh, he's in the middle of a house full of things that are probably about to come alive and try to walk all over it. Um, I think Python's the only one that's built for combat out of all of us. <laughs> Python, save us! Everyone hides behind you. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Pruitt, one half of WebDM. Uh, we have our videos here, and and they're awesome. You should check them out. Uh, we got our games Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I can't wait to come back next week and finish this up. How you doing, Jim Davis? How was that for you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I think, you know, I'm as I learn more about uh, my character, my character learns more about herself. Um, and so, yeah, like, like, as I said last week, uh, pseudonym Python feels like a key without a lock at this point. There's nothing missing from her, but there is a purpose in her life that she does not yet uh, haven't stumbled upon. And so action and, and sort of purposeful uh that sort of purposeful action is what uh, what I envision for. I'm I'm great. I'm doing great. Loving the loving the uh, the way today turned out because it's sort of um, a lot of just figuring out how all of us relate to each other, and and 
I love it when a, a party starts to form bonds with each other, even if they don't necessarily have a ton in common or like, why are these people together? So, we made uh, omelets. We made and omelets. Talked about, and talked about, you know, fans. And had oh, a yeah. sleepover. I had a sleepover, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm having a great time uh, despite the uh, chaos IRL. So, um, Loving it. As Pruitt said, we are here on Twitch Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays in the evenings playing D&D and Invisible Sun. We are on uh, YouTube most Wednesdays, sometimes on Thursday, uh, where we do RPG and tabletop advice stuff. And uh, come check us out. And we love to just talk and hang out and all that good stuff. There you go. And TK. <laughs> it's me. It's TK. Um, I'm not going to do the whole plug thing because like we're already running late. So just follow my Twitter, TK joins the fray. <laughs> It'll be fun. If you ever want to see me, um, play Dungeons and Dragons or Invisible Sun or who knows whatever, you'll find out about it there because I love talking about myself because I love attention. Um, been a long time since somebody stressed me out as much as Jim Davis. So Grant, uh, you'll hear about that tomorrow. I don't know what's happened uh, in Land Between Two Rivers last week, but be sure that Icky's going to leave Gildan to die somewhere. What? You missed, FYI. You missed an orgy and a wedding. An and orgy a and a wedding? A goblin I married off Mud. I married <laughs> off Mud to an idiot. I mean, I'm he was so cool. mad. <laughs> two orgies, a wedding, so and a funeral. Yeah, I just want to say, Pruitt, I haven't recovered from Pruitt's game last night, so... What did I do? What did you ran D and D. You didn't bring me any around. Snicker Prudels for one thing, rude. rude. Anyway, yeah. So follow me on Twitter. That's fine. Whatever. I'm stressed out. I did drive two hours to take some to Lisa Chin. Well, she didn't mail any to me. She kept them all for herself because she's clearly your favorite. Whatever. I'm mad. Tunnel snakes rule. No, man. <laughs> shut up. I hate you, Nick. And. How you doing, Kelly, with your eyes kind of rolling around in your head at that? Yeah. I'm just confused by a lot of the conversations that happen. Um, I'm Kelly at the Opera Geek on Twitter. Follow me there. If you enjoy seeing me do really weird things on Twitch, you can find me here, 8 p.m. Wednesdays. You can find me 2 p.m. Wednesdays on the Greyhawk channel playing Greyhawk singing as Bard Brelinda, uh, who is currently um, trying to get the deed to Castle Ravenloft because, yes. Um, and, uh, that's about it. Yeah, and if you didn't see in chat, going to PAX Unplugged, really excited. Fully expecting delivery of cookies, Pruitt. Yes. This will be a thing. <laughs> he delivers. He delivers. And I am Grant Ellis. I am an independent content creator for tabletop role-playing games. I design for TC Gaming. I have, uh, two books coming out through them and several other books through people I'm not allowed to disclose yet. Um, I designed for 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons and Cypher System. I'm running four Invisible Sun campaigns. All of them are financed through my Patreon, patreon.com slash grantrellis. Uh, I'm a producer here on WebDM for their Twitch channel, producing Starward Bound on Tuesdays, uh, Invisible Sun on Wednesdays, and The Land Between Two Rivers on Thursdays. Um, if you want to follow me, my Twitter is at wisepapagrant. I posted it in the, uh, chat. Um... So thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Chat, you were amazing. And let's go ahead and throw a raid to uh, someone who totally deserves it. Let's raid Grimjack21502, uh, who is a cast member on Starward Bound. Uh, he is doing a Dragonlance campaign. Um, so let's hop in. This is going to put him possibly uh we got people dropping let's stay in guys because we're we're gonna put him over 100 viewers possibly i don't think that's happened on his channel before so stick around let's raid brother grimjack thank you all bye bye, -bye. raid away raid away Ra